Let's talk about Zoe tonight. Zoe is both the one of the easiest favorite characters and one of the hardest to do. So first, have you ever seen the original concept art for her? She kind of has like Pippi Long stocking stockings, uh, and that was based off of actually one of the Turtle Rock employees. And we always like to abstract away from individuals that we know and kind of be a little bit more, I don't want to say generic, but she particularly wanted to be every person. Uh, the original person she was based on, I don't know if they want people to know that, uh, but she was awesome, super cool person. Uh, uh, did a bunch of stuff with her as well, but when we took her in t when we took Zoe in at, at Valve, we kind of made some changes there. And she made she actually went through a regression of stages because she, she even had a different voice actress or actor. Uh, this is one of the first times and only times we ever actually wrote, recorded, and came back and we're just struggling with some of the lines and some of the delivery in where we thought we could go with this character, and where we wanted to go with the character and made a really hard choice to go with Jen Taylor. Jen Taylor's awesome. Like, that was easy choice. The hard choice was saying to this other person, hey, we're not going to continue on with this path. Um, her yelling and screaming is still in it because she's a really good yeller and screamer. Uh, but that kind of just didn't pull together, which, which stinks. Um, but her character model also changed, and eventually we went with uh, Sonia Kinski uh, for the face, uh, but then Sonia Kiski got Bell's palsy where she couldn't make facial changes. Like, 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 you know how sometimes when you're working on something and you're like, oh my God, really? This is what we got to put up? Like, not put up with a lovely person. Great, we based it off of her. But still, like, there's always just something coming up and, and, and kind of making you fumble. But her character and how he wrote for her and how I think she worked for her was, she's you. Um, she's a... Well, she's a woman, and a lot of people were like, oh, no, men only play these games. We're like, no, that's not true. Actually, I think at the time, uh, Love for Dead was the, uh, we had the biggest split of uh, gender uh, than any game at Valve. And I think Zoe's one of the reasons why. Cause she's super relatable, and she's super, like, she's a film nut. So she knows, she knows, she's the only one who knows she's in a zombie movie. She gets what she's in and decides to not play it down and dreaded, but instead keep it upbeat and positive. And I think that just really makes, and I think Jen Taylor just does an amazing job of kind of taking these lines that you know are jokey, but not making them jokey. And instead, it's just kind of like flowing with her and really good. And like her, uh, my God, uh, <laughs> the God is deadline. Because uh, uh, that was just some, that was original. That was original up there when I first wrote that line about getting God. Uh but, like, she just delivers those kind of lines just so good and so earnestly um, that she's just really fun to write for. Uh, Jen Taylor, I'd, I would do, you know, she's the voice of Katana, by the way, also, and a bunch of other stuff. She's a whole bunch of stuff. I'm, I'm underselling her. Uh, super talented. Uh, would work with her in a minute. At the time, she was down in Portland and would come up for sessions so that we were all recording at the same place. But just super easy to work with. And then I think the model, um, you know, we got in a really good place with that. And just one of the favorite characters. And then Zoe, the name, while we went back and forth with a bunch of them, um, my sister's dog, who I love, uh, is named Zoe. And that cemented the, that choice for me. And the spelling uh, reflects uh, the dog's <laughs> name spelling. Because sometimes you get to make little call-outs to things you love. I don't know. 